Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to explore this bad boy. This is a 550 CFM, 125 mile an hour Ryobi blower, better known as a leaf blower. And you can see we've been testing it in the snow. Now, just to be clear, this isn't specifically intended as a snow blower, uh, but it can be used as one. This is one killer leaf blower, however. If all you're looking for is a leaf blower, yeah, it's going to do a great job. The snow? Well, let's take a look. What we'll do first before we get into the test is unbox this and tell you a few things to look for when you are shopping for a leaf blower that can handle snow. You know, a snow blower. I'm in Canada. It's just before Christmas and guess what? We got snow, kids. So I'm going to take this outside and we're going to try to blow some serious snow with it and see what it actually does. Now there's a couple of things here. This isn't actually for me. My girlfriend has a screwed up shoulder and shoveling isn't good for her. So I thought, how can we get something that's a little easier for her to move that snow? And uh, she was looking at one of those electric brooms. But an electric broom, you really only can use it for a few applications. Leaf blower, especially a strong one, you can use for all kinds of stuff. Let's go over a couple of little things. Firstly, uh, if you're going to buy a leaf blower for the purposes of getting snow off of your driveway, sidewalks, yada yada, you're going to want to make sure it's one of the larger 40 volt ones, not the little 18 volt ones. There's just not enough power, it won't last long enough, unless you're just trying to get rid of a, you know, a skiff of snow. But if you actually want to get rid of two or three inches, yeah, you're going to need the bigger one. That's what this offers. Then the problem is, what to get? There's a pile of these things, right? And worse, there's a whole bunch of other brands that are really similar. Now, let's delve into that for just a minute. I don't know whether you know, but Ryobi, Milwaukee, Rigid, Vax, Hoover, Homelite, yeah, they're all the same company. Now, the products are not all the same. They're not just rebadged. They actually go into different markets and are different quality. So let's go through that very quickly. Sort of the top of the line for this company is Milwaukee. Milwaukee makes tools that a professional might use, you know, a real construction company. They're in that sort of hilti sort of range, but a little less and certainly less expensive. Then you get to Ryobi, which is obviously this product. And we have all kinds of Ryobi products. By the way, this is completely unsponsored. So if you find the video useful, a big thumbs up would be super appreciated. It really does help with the algorithm. But back to Ryobi. Ryobi is their mid-level trim. So these are products that are meant for serious DIYers and serious homeowners. Guys that need to use their tools for serious work from time to time. And then they st you step down to Rigid, which is just a, a more consumer-friendly brand. It, you know, at each point, the prices go down. And then they've got all these other brands that we'll just skip. Those are the three big brands in North America, Canada, and the United States. And then, of course, there are other brands like DeWalt, Ego, and Greenworks that are just different companies altogether. But they do have competing products that sell pretty well. So we're going to talk about that as we unbox this. But the biggest thing to look for when you're looking for a leaf blower to blow snow is that CFM, cubic feet per minute. This is a 550. Anything over about 450 is going to be fine for most light snow as long as you're not getting hit. If you are getting five and six inches of snow, this is just going to be frustrating. That's not what a leaf blower is good for. But it will do two inches especially in places where I live, like Calgary, which is always very dry, so our snow is very granular and light. And this will do a pretty good job of blowing it off. We're gonna go prove that after we unbox it. The next thing to look for is pretty subjective as to whether you care about it. This is their whisper line, and the whisper line is quieter. And how do they make it quieter? Well, they move the motor back a bit in the housing and they have some noise baffles in the chamber that don't affect the actual output other than the sound output. And that'll lower the decibels from mid 70s down to mid 60s. Mid 60 uh, decibels, quite tolerable for most people. My girlfriend's quite sensitive to noise, so the whisper will make a big difference for her. For me, eh, I probably don't care. But if you're sensitive to noise, especially leaf blowers, right, that the high pitch sound, or you give a crap about your neighbors, the whisper might be nice. This one is rated at 59 decibels. Another thing to look for is the warranty. Warranties from Ryobi vary depending on where you are. In Canada, it's a five-year warranty as long as you register it. This thing I expect to last 20 years. And I think the last thing to really consider when you're buying a leaf blower is the weight. So depending on the weight of your battery, this will come in at about six pounds, ranging all the way up to about eight and a half pounds. Again, depending on what size of battery you put in. We're going to put in this five amp, 40 volt, 
and it's not that light. However, this one has this cool handle that'll make a difference for how you have to carry it. You won't have to carry it in an odd way. My girlfriend's only 115 pounds, you know, five and a half feet, and this will actually make a difference to her. Pop that button and pull it out. Easy peasy. Battery life, how long is this gonna last? So this is a five amp battery, and on a five amp battery, in real world use, the estimate is that you will get about half an hour of solid, full throttle use out of it. Now this also has a turbo button on top, and that turbo button will really increase the output, but it will also really drain your battery more. So you'll get about 15 or so minutes out of it if you're running it on turbo the whole time. If you're running it on its lowest speed, you can get up to an hour on it, but that's not particularly useful. All right, so just before we show you how loud this is, this trigger is variable. It's one of the nice features, and not all of these types of units have it. So this one, if I press it just a little bit, it'll come on just a little bit. If I pull it the full throttle, it will give me all it can do short of this turbo button. Let's give it a shot right now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This is less than two inches. But anything that's packed or gone icy, forget it. That was about 10 minutes of use. And you can see with the five amp battery, and this one's in good condition, it was fully charged beforehand. I'm down to one bar. That's not a very good battery life. That's nowhere near the spec. Now, again, I use the turbo for an awful lot of this, and that will drain it. So look, as you can see in the test, this did an okay job with very light snow. That was maybe an inch and a half total, maybe? When you start blowing snow from one side of a driveway to the other, you know, it stacks up, it piles up on itself, and it gets heavier and harder to move. And I had to use the turbo button quite a lot with this, especially at the end, to get it to move that heavy snow. And when I say heavy snow, I'm an Alberta man. There's nothing drier than Alberta snow. If you're in the Northeast, like Maine or New York or Ontario, you know, Quebec, Montreal, Toronto, anything like that, it's debatable for sure. Now, here's the other big problem with it. It's heavy. Now, I don't mean like I can't carry it, but I'm a 210 pound, six foot tall man who's used to working with tools. And I can tell you that after about Five minutes of using this, especially having to press the turbo button down, I found that I could feel it in my forearm right there. And so what I had to do was switch arms. Well, had to is a bit much. I chose to switch arms. There's no way my sweetie can handle this thing. She's 110 pounds, five foot five-ish, and it's just not going to be appropriate for her. It's just going to be too heavy. Now, where it did do an okay job, was on foot pads. In other words, in my case, you saw me do the sidewalk. And that was okay because it's not very wide. But you also probably noticed that it didn't scrape off the footprints or any track marks that people had gone through. And for me, I'd just rather use a shovel. As you can see here, it doesn't leave a very nice edge. It kind of looks like, well, what it is. It kind of looks like it was done with the leaf blower. I like a nice edge that's done with a shovel. Now, does that make a big deal? No, I wouldn't pay any money for that. but. When I've got a shovel, I'd prefer to do it that way. This is going to be great for somebody that just wants to get rid of a few little skiffs of snow. Or somebody that already has one and thought, ah, I'll just give it a shot. But buying it for a purpose-built snow blower, uh, probably not the thing. So hey, if you found this video useful, big thumbs up would be super appreciated. Subscribe's also appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtch, that's www.urtech.ca, or you can leave a question or comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.